Welcome to the Curriculum Development Process Professional Learning Series. The focus of this module is Phase 2, Articulating an Instructional Vision. My name is Misty Higgins and I am joined by Fox DeMoise and we are Professional Learning Coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. There are four phases to the CDP and four corresponding modules. Before engaging Module 2, we recommend that you access the introduction to the Curriculum Development Process and Module module one to gain context for the learning that follows. For this module, please make sure you have access to the following documents. The curriculum development process from the model curriculum framework, a copy of the participant handout to hold your thinking throughout the module, and the CDP self-assessment tool, which you will use to assess where your district may be in relation to the essential elements of phase two. All materials are hyperlinked on the slide for easy access. Before we move into phase two content, it will be helpful for you to establish a baseline level of understanding. Look briefly at the name phase two, articulate instructional vision in its two steps. Next, consider our learning goal. We are learning about the importance of establishing a shared understanding of the subject um, area content skills and pedagogy to inform a local instructional vision that guides the curriculum development process. This information will be helpful on the next slide when we activate background knowledge you might have about the second phase of the curriculum development process and is also available at the top of your participant handout. We will use a no need to know approach for activating background knowledge. First, note things you may already know about our learning goal, perhaps using the title and the steps of phase two for added insight. And as we're beginning, this can certainly include any hunches that you may have as well. Next, infer things that may be important for you to find out based on our learning goal, so things you may need to know. Both what you may know and what you may need to know can be recorded in the table at the top of page one of your participant handout. As the module unfolds, hold these lists in mind. You will be invited to update them during the midpoint and closing reflections. After capturing what you may know and what you may need to know, please synthesize your overall sense of understanding using the one to five scale provided. This too will be revisited during the closing reflection. Pause the video and restart after completing the self-assessment. Now that you have a preliminary sense of where you might be relative to our learning goal, let's move into our success criteria for module two. So by the end of this module, we want you to be able to identify the key actions and products of phase two of the curriculum development process, access resources to support implementation of phase two, and begin to develop an action plan for implementing phase two at the local level. So let's start with our first success criterion that you can identify key actions and products of phase two of the curriculum development process. Phase two is where the curriculum team you have formed engage in analysis of the standards and current research regarding teaching and learning in the content area of focus, matching that to an inventory of local needs. The team uses that analysis to craft a K-12 instructional vision of what teaching and learning in that content area should look like in classrooms across the district. It is one of the most crucial components of the entire process because this is about setting the vision that serves as the instructional foundation and guides all your work moving forward. We want to pause and give you a chance to read through phase two. As you read, focus on the key actions and products of each step of the phase. If accessing the electronic version, simply go to the table of contents in the CDP document and click on phase two and that will take you to the start of this section. Feel free to annotate directly on the text and space is provided under success criterion one on your participant handout to capture your thinking. During your reading, focus in on the text and the key questions. We will take a closer look at the key tools a little later in this module. Pause the video and restart after you have read phase two and captured your thinking on your handout. We want to give you an opportunity to process what you read with your team. If there are more than five or six in your group, consider forming two or more teams. So with your team, discuss each step of phase two in order, focusing on the key actions and products. Make sure to equitably share airtime as you ask each other uh, clarifying questions and make connections to how you currently arrive at an instructional vision in your district or school. Also, feel free to capture any new ideas on your participant handout. 
pause the video and restart after your team discussion. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share off to hear from others in the room. So what thoughts, ideas, connections, or questions do you have regarding phase two of the curriculum development process? Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. Because phase two is so foundational to the rest of the process and throughout implementation of the curriculum, we want to spend some time taking a closer look at the instructional vision and the importance of analyzing the Kentucky academic standards. The instructional vision is like your North Star or guiding light, and it is what you are striving for. It doesn't mean that you're there yet, and it's not based on your current reality. It focuses on the student experience and details of what student learning should look like in action. A well-articulated instructional vision ensures everyone throughout the district is aligned to and working from common language in a shared understanding of the observable indicators of the vision and action at the district, school, and classroom levels. The instructional vision should also guide decisions regarding curriculum, instructional resources, and professional learning. It is your gut check when making decisions and thinking through the lens of will this decision or action move us closer to that instructional vision, which is why is the first responsibility of the curriculum team. It influences all work moving forward, and it is a living document that is regularly revisited. When creating your instructional vision, there are three important lenses to focus on and ensure are reflected throughout. Lens one is to ensure the vision is aligned to the Kentucky academic standards for the content area and the foundational beliefs within the standards document. The second lens is to ensure alignment to current research, so not about what we may think or feel to be true or based on the way we've always approached teaching and learning in a specific content area, but rather aligned to research on what actually has been shown to improve student outcomes. The third lens is to take into account the local needs of your community and the uniqueness of your student population. Once a team has created a draft of the instructional vision, it is critical to share it with stakeholders, provide opportunities for input, and then use that to guide any possible revisions before moving into the next phase of the curriculum development process. For the instructional vision to align with the Kentucky academic standards, the curriculum development team should spend time analyzing the standards document. As they analyze the standards for the content area focus, the, the team should consider how the standards are organized, what principles guide that organization, how learning progresses both vertically across grade levels and also within a course, and what overarching knowledge, understandings, and skills learning progresses toward. There are key sections built into a content area standards document to or support these considerations, and those include the writer's vision statement, design considerations, and then the foundational documents that were used in the creation of the standards. Another useful tool is the getting to know the CAS modules available on kystandards.org. Be sure to give adequate considerations to the multiple dimensions and the student practices of whichever content area is being focused on because they are fundamental to authentic learning within the discipline and empower students toward independent lifelong learning comprised of deep and critical thinking. They are essential to the vibrant student learning experiences envisioned for Kentucky classrooms. We want to stop and allow you a chance to process your learning. So consider the following two questions. In what ways might a clearly articulated instructional vision for each content area support curriculum development and decision making within the district or school? And when analyzing the Kentucky academic standards, including the dimensions, practices, and supporting materials, which aspect may warrant additional focus to meet existing content area needs in your local context? So in other words, really thinking about areas of the standards that will be critical for your team to think through to help improve student outcomes in your school or district. We would like for you to first individually capture your thinking around these two questions in the space provided under success criterion one on your participant handout. Then have a team discussion ensuring each person has an opportunity to share their thinking. Add any new thinking from the team discussion to the same space on your participant handout. So pause the video and restart after um, you have individually responded to the questions and have wrapped up your team discussion. We are at the midpoint of the module, so we want to pause and give you a chance to reflect. 
Based on your learning so far, what might you now add to your no need to know table at the top of your participant handout? And please note this could include transferring items from your need to know to your no list when appropriate. Pause the video and restart once you have added your thinking to the no need to know table. We're going to move into our second success criteria that you can access resources to support phase two implementation. Step one is about planning and identifying resources for establishing a shared understanding of the subject area content, skills, and relevant pedagogy prior to development or revision of the curriculum, which provides a common foundation for the work. The team analysis planning template allows a curriculum team to gain clarity around the essential elements and professional learning considerations needed to help them reach a deep understanding of the content area. This ensures readiness for crafting an instructional vision. Step two proceeds from the curriculum team shared understanding of the depth and rigor of the standards, a common view of content pedagogy grounded in current research and an understanding of the needs of the local community in order to develop an instructional vision of teaching and learning for that content area. Sample instructional visions linked as tools in the CDP, of which this instructional vision for social studies is one, offer a range of ways this task can be approached. In addition to the key tools, the CDP also contains an appendix that provides more support for implementing each phase. The phase two toolkit includes the professional learning module and associated resources, sample artifacts from districts around the state and video clips from districts sharing their experiences as they work through the process. We will move here into some sample artifacts. Carefully crafting an instructional vision that allows for full alignment to the cast while also embodying what matters most to a district's vision and values gives the curriculum process its driver for ongoing decision making. This is an example of an instructional vision for reading and writing from Anchorage Public School. Here's an example of an instructional vision for reading and writing Garrett County created to drive their decision making throughout the curriculum process. We want to give you some time to explore phase two tools and resources. As you explore, focus on which tools and resources may be most beneficial to supporting the work of phase two, what tools and or resources may still be needed to support phase two. You can hold your thinking in the designated section of the participant handout for this success criterion. So pause the video and restart after exploring the resources and capturing your thinking on the participant handout. If you have more than one team, you may want to have a whole group share out to hear from everyone. During your exploration, which tools and resources did you think will be most beneficial? What were some tools and resources that might still be needed to support phase two? Pause the video and restart after the whole group share out. We're to the last success criterion where we want you to provide you some time to begin to develop an action plan for implementing phase two at the local level. Before thinking through your action plan, we want to pause for a final reflection to anchor your learning from the session so you can move it forward into application. Go back to the no need to know table on page one of your participant handout. Review the items on your no list and update as needed. Which item seems most important for you to remember? Then review the items on your need to know list and update as needed. Determine which item seems most important to address in supporting implementation of phase two in your district. Record both of those items in the space provided under success criterion three on your participant handout. Pause the video and restart after completing this step of the final reflection. And lastly, we want you to reassess your overall level of understanding of, of our learning goal and just for the module generally after engaging in, in this module on that scale of one to five. Determine your rating now in the space provided under success criterion three. Pause the video and restart after completing the second portion of the final reflection. To help you determine possible next steps, we recommend you complete the first section from the CDP self-assessment tool focused on essential element two and articulated K-12 instructional vision. The element is broken down into specific criteria necessary for supporting that element with a place for you to give a rating on a scale of one being not yet present in our district to three being fully present and systematic in our district. Again, this may help you pinpoint specific aspects of phase two you want to prioritize as a part of your action plan.
With your district teams, you'll use your participant handout to begin thinking about possible next steps, completion dates, supporting resources, responsibilities, and support you'll need. Planning notes can be captured at the end of your participant handout. And finally, we ask that you take time to complete the short professional learning survey to provide feedback on module two. An ELA certificate is available and can be accessed at the end of the survey. And please feel free to reach out to Misty or to me with any questions you may have. Thank you for participating in module two of the curriculum development process professional learning series.